the Cleveland Browns, the team in this division that has kind of made the most noise this offseason for various reasons, I think we can to say the least. They bring in, obviously, Deshaun Watson, trying to figure out still what is going to happen with him. Does he play the whole season? Does he get suspended? Who knows? I probably lean more on the he's likely to get suspended side of things just based off some of the comments that we heard from Roger Delk, especially when he was at the NFL owners meeting. But at this point, I ain't got a damn clue, and I don't think any of us really do. Uh, you also, you know, you lose uh, uh, Jarvis Landry, let him walk in the offseason, but replace him at that point with Amari Cooper from the Dallas Cowboys. Same the Cleveland Browns. If you look, if you're talking about we spent our first and second round picks already on Deshaun Watson, I don't think it's a bad move, despite how ridiculous that contract kind of reset the uh, the market. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know if they replaced Jarvis Landry with Amari Cooper. I just think that they upgraded. Jarvis oh, I think Landry no, no question Amari it's an Cooper. upgrade. But I'm just talking about just yeah. on the depth chart. If you look, a wide receiver I, one is now this yeah. to this. You upgraded into Mark Cooper, but you also brought in a receiver who works really well in a system. You brought him in, matched him with a quarterback who works his best outside of the system. Yes, that's going to be really interesting to see. Um, the one thing that I'm kind of interested in is David Bell. The, their third round pick tested yeah. really poorly kind of reminds me of Jarvis Landry somebody who can win with physicality on the inside as kind of a not a big slot but a physical slot um, and I think that's really where he's going to find his niche in this offense at filling that Jarvis Landry role when you have Amari Cooper on the outside and like you said Amari Cooper is kind of a, a scheme guy he's somebody who runs fantastic routes but he's not exactly. the freestyling guy like you see a, a Tyreek Hill who's going to make these massive plays when when Patrick Mahomes rolls out um in this case when when Deshaun Watson is trying to make a play now mm -hmm. um it'll be interesting to see how everything meshes in that offense um but you know they didn't have any premium picks Martin Emerson was their first pick um in the yep. third round uh, getting a little bit of depth at, at cornerback is never a bad idea. Alex Wright was a fantastic pick. I thought that that was great value. And then Perry on Winfrey. That's the Can really his, interesting one. I like this pick a lot to play alongside Miles Garrett. Can he keep his head on straight? And, and that's, that's all there is to it. Um, yep. He's a, a, a Juco guy. Um, and he is a, 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 a he likes the nightlife, uh, we'll, we'll say. Hey, so you don't have to worry be, about it in Cleveland. You're good. That doesn't happen that's there. That's very true. That is very true. And so it'll be interesting. As long as he's able to 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 keep his head on straight, I, I think he was a top 45 player. Like he was a very, very good player in this draft. He was played out of position at Oklahoma and they made him play nose tackle. He'll be a you know three tech, somebody who can shoot gaps and, and use his you know 35 inch arms that he has. Um he's got great leverage on the interior. He's a strong player. It'll be really interesting to see how Perry on Winfrey goes. Yeah, and then uh, you see the Bengals come. Oh, sorry, so you see the Browns come up and try to match. I wonder the success they saw with Evan McPherson last year for the Bengals. They bring in yep. Cade York, the kicker out of LSU. You know how important a kicker is, especially in this division. Winter gets early in the AFC North. You need to have a kicker with a good leg to try to cut through the wind. They need to hit a really pure ball as well. That's why Boswell has been able to find success in Heinz Field despite having that open into the stadium. Like if your ball is straight up and down when it's on his rotation. You're good, but as soon as I think gets a little bit off access, you see balls just whip away. And Cleveland, with that with that wind coming off of Lake Erie, that's one place you've got to hit a pure ball. So I can't help but wonder if KD York was kind of that. Hey, we need to make sure we have the kicking situation figured out because you need to be well rounded all different aspects of the game. I think the the uh, special teams area of concern for the Cleveland Browns with everything else getting so much better. Uh, also in round five, you bring in Jerome Ford, the running back out of Cincinnati, stays in state. Goes just to a different city. I'm a fan of Jerome Ford. I liked him on tape. He doesn't get a ton. Um, he doesn't do a ton like after the play. But I think when you've got you're looking at um, uh, Kareem Hunt on the last year of his deal, we don't know what's going to happen with him behind uh, Nick Chubb. You're looking at Dearness Johnson. I kind of like this move to bring in a little bit of depth and a little bit of security blanket for 2023. I don't know how much he'll play this year. It's still going to be that two back tandem. But we also know this is a team that if one of these running backs go down, it's a scheme where if you're a running back and you have some talent you can find a ton of success. Just go back and look last year at Dearness Johnson. I wouldn't be surprised if we see at least one of those games out of Jerome Ford coming up here pretty soon. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either. I liked him, um, and I liked him when he was uh, when I saw him at the Senior Bowl as well. So it'll be interesting. Um, I think that, like you said, this is a team they love to run the football. Um, yeah. And Nick Chubb has been throughout his career, you know, here and there when it comes to injuries. He's a big mm -hmm. physical runner, and those, you know, yeah. hits take their toll. Yeah, they do eventually. But at the same time, like in terms of pure runners, Nick Chubb is one of the best in the NFL. No question about it. He's yeah, a guy oh, yeah, you give a ton yeah. of touches to. 
at some point it'll probably catch up. And especially when you're playing the, the longer season we have now with these 17 games, it catches up eventually. But when you still have someone like a Kareem Hunt who could be a starting running back in half the league, you're in a pretty good shape. Not to mention, too, now they get a little run a little bit of zone option or has a little bit of zone read with it, Deshaun Watson. That's a new wrinkle I think Kevin Stefanski yeah. is going to be pretty happy about. Uh, sitting here also, continuing out the rest of their draft in the sixth round, you bring in Mike Woods, a wide receiver out of Oklahoma. Uh, then in the seventh round, Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas, edge rusher, dipping back to Oklahoma again. So that's three picks from uh, from Oklahoma this year. Uh, they stole as many picks here as Lincoln Riley did, sending a take, had transfer portal over to USC. Uh, and then in round seven, pick 246, Dawson Deaton, the center from Texas Tech. This is a team like it's you don't have a ton of holes on the Cleveland Browns. This is a Super Bowl contender we thought last year. They should be one again this year. Um, I'm so surprised they didn't bring back in Jadavion Clowney. I don't think anyone's still writing that off because that was a very mutual beneficial relationship. He played so well alongside uh, Miles Garrett, and I think they were happy to have him on the team with how much pressure they are able to generate. Could it still happen? Maybe. Uh, but like I said, adding Perry on Winfrey on this defense, it kind of adds a little bit, it takes some of the pressure off. But it's still, if you can bring someone like in coming off that edge like a Clowney, makes a ton of sense. Like I said, it's, it's a team that's already set to win. We just got to find out what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson and also what's going to happen with Baker Mayfield, whether or not he ever sees a snap playing for the Cleveland Browns again. That's one of the questions that we have no idea right now. Yeah, um, and when it comes to Jadavion Clowney, I would be kind of surprised if he wasn't back on another one or or even a two-year deal yeah. um, w- with Cleveland. Like you said, it was mutu- mutually beneficial uh, for them. He had the best production of his career um, playing alongside Miles Garrett. Now they have Perry on Winfrey on the interior as well. Um, I think that it would work out for him. I just think that he kind of likes to do his own thing over the summer and isn't worried about signing a contract. He's a former number one overall pick. He knows he's going to get his money, um, and he likes doing this year-to-year thing. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these guys, too, like they have their own trainers they work with, and they feel Mm -hmm. comfortable in their situation. They don't want to have to go somewhere else. I can sleep in my own bed. I can work with the people who know me the best. It makes a ton. That's why I, that's why I don't get caught up when I'm like, okay, this guy didn't report to camp. Unless there is an extenuating circumstance or there's an issue that's going on, then I'll worry about it. But outside of right now, like it's voluntary for a reason. Unless you're Kadarius Tony, then you probably uh, need to be there, which uh, he did show back up. Uh, but look, if you're a Cleveland Browns fan and uh, you want to let us know what you guys thought of the draft, the draft hall for the Browns from the 2022 NFL draft, let us know down in the comments. While you're down there, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It does help us out a lot. And also make sure you stay informed with all the latest content coming here from Pro Football Network.